be kicking off tonight. They won the toss, but deferred their option to the second half. So Red Hill chose to receive. The Mules will be defending the east goal and kicking off tonight. And that means the defense will be on the field first. Mules have made a couple of changes on defense. Amos Eckleberry will move into the uh, middle linebacker spot. And uh, Marty David moves out to the outside linebacker spot. The Mules, uh, Bob, last week and uh, against Mount Carmel just really don't like the way things are going against that option. You mean against Salem? Yeah. Well, I against Mount Carmel before that. Before that. Well, you know, the thing about it is... Um, I'm sure, uh, you know, Coach Hatfield, he, he said at that time, was not happy uh, about the way things that uh, had, had ran before. But uh, in uh, uh, defense of uh, Salem, Rob Power runs that option about as good as anybody can. Steve. Man, he's good. <laughs> Man, is he good. He runs it very, I tell you very what, well. Everybody hears about Ryan Weeks. Everybody talks about Ryan Weeks. But Rob Power's the load on that team. Rob Don't get Power. Wrong. Ryan Weeks is a good ball player. He's a, Rob Power's a spark. He is, Rob Power's an ex excellent quarterback. And uh, he really makes, he runs that option so well. And uh, he makes it very tough to defense against. Tonight we'll see Todd Hardacre, quarterback, a 5'7", 145-pound senior. Uh, very slight of build, which will make a difference. And you've been seeing some big horse quarterbacks. Power and uh, Ryan Smith and uh, Novak of it all eight. Uh, and uh, Ryan Seibert for the Edwards County Lions, a big, strong quarterback. So uh, this will be the first time the Mules have seen a slight of build quarterback. But Matt Ambrose is the uh, big dog, uh, brother to Mark Ambrose, that was such an outstanding running back for sure Red Hills. He sure was. And Matt's now a senior, and he's been running the football since he was a freshman. Uh, he's 5'11", 170 in the senior, and he is a good one. Oh, there's a little twist there, Stanley. Coach Bill Evans, the head coach of Red Hill, is going to be up in the booth tonight instead of down on the field. So uh, Other coaches have tried this in the past. Michael Boyle, remember Mike tried it one time, but he got so nuts so up here in the booth he had to get back down on the field. Brooke Clayton will kick it off. It's a high kick coming downfield to Matt McAdow, and he's trying to get to the outside, and he does find a hole. He may go. He's got one man to beat. And Danny Hesterly corners him at the Mule 45. Red Hill almost ran that back all the way. I tell you what, Stanley, the, the Achilles heel of the Mules lately has been the kickoffs. They have not covered kickoffs very well. Well, no, no excuse there. That was a good high kick. They should have been down there, but uh, the people that were down there in the outside lane got themselves taken out. So, the Mule defense finds themselves uh, in their own territory already. Uh, it'll be first and ten for Red Hill at the Mule 44-yard line as we open up the ball game tonight. Out of a run and shoot, they send the man in motion. There's the snap. On the option play, they pitch it to the outside in good yardage for Ambrose. There is a flag down, however, on the play. Pardon me, that was Brandon Tully who carried the ball, a 5'11", 175-pound sophomore, Brandon Tully. But there is a flag on the play. I think it's against the Salukis. It is a clip oh, against right. Red Hill. And it's laying back at the 44, which means that's where the 15 yards will be marked off. And so instead of about uh, an 11-yard pickup, Red Hill will be backed up in their own territory. So the Mules get the first break of the night, and Red Hill has come out fired up, as we fully expected them to be. I told Scott Furhop, the Mules got a big bullseye on their back from now on. Well, you know, when you're uh, sitting on top of the conference, it's just like, uh, you know, we've talked about it for years, how everybody, you know, they love to beat uh, Salem, they love to beat uh, Mount Carmel in football. Well, the Mules have taken over that slot, folks. And... Uh, we're going to be the one that everybody loves to beat. Out of the run and shoot. Hardacre sets them down. Ambrose in motion. There is the snap. Bobby's passing situation here. Oh, it is complete to Ambrose, and he'll be drugged down by Matt Hodges at about the 49. Darren Milner went for the interception, didn't get it. Had he picked it off, he was off to the races. But it was a completion up to the 48, let's call it. Or it'll be second down and about uh, 17, 18 yards to go for Red Hill. As uh, they were in a first and 25 after the penalty. The Salukis break the huddle. With that run and shoot look. The one back set. Hardacre has a man in motion. Mule show blitz. They are on the blitz. And Tully is brought down by Kurt Robbins in the backfield. 
Well, that didn't work. Brandon Tully came over out of the slot and uh, did not get very far. You know, it just looked like that play there. The Mules all of a sudden woke up and realized, hey, we're in a football game here. <laughs> because they came up fired up and uh, popping each other on the back of the head and same way to go and all that. And, uh, before that, there just wasn't that spark. So let's see what the Mules do right here. Again, they show blitz. There's a six-man front, Bob. There's the snap. And the heat's on. Hardacre, he fumbled. And Darren Milner has it. Hardacre fumbled the football. Brooke Clayton stripped him. And Darren Milner got the recovery. So the Meals get the football first and 10 at the Red Hill 39. The Meals blitzed and had a lot of people coming. And the protection broke down immediately. Brooke Clayton stripped the football away. And, uh, well, what's this? Marty David and Brooke Clayton are coming in immediately on offense. Matt Link and Eric Simpson go to the sideline. So this means, <laughs> look out. Uh, who's the defensive end over there? <laughs> Here they come, young man. Kip Walters takes the snap, hands off to Darren Miller. <laughs> and he got the block he wanted and gets about four. Uh, number 66 for Red Hill, who is John... Young, or Josh Young, was uh, decked by uh, Brooke Clayton and Marty David, and uh, well, it's only about a three-yard pickup, and not quite as much as I thought. Second and seven for the Mules. They go with the same set. Clayton at the fullback. Marty David and Darren Milner, the halfbacks. There's the snap. They hand it off to Darren Milner. He's looking for room to run. He's got room to run. He is up to the 30-yard line. He'll be just shy of the first down. It'll be about a yard short. It'll bring up a third down and a yard for the Mules. Well, definitely four-down territory here. So they got two downs to get the yard. Josh Young, that defensive end, Bob, I was talking about, is being employed by his troops to hang in there. <laughs> the poor fellow's getting double-teamed pretty hard. I'll yeah, tell you yeah. that right now. Same set. Mules need a yard for a first down at the Red Hill 30. Walters takes the snap. Marty David gets the handoff. He's got a lot of room to run. He's still on his feet. He's all the way down to the 16-yard line. So Marty David gets uh, a rare carry. And uh, we'll leave the lineup now in favor of Eric Simpson. No, he'll stay in. And Darren Miller will come out, I guess. He'll better hurry up. First and 10 for the Mules at the Red Hill 17-yard line. Kip Walters takes the snap, hands it off to Eric Simpson. Cuts inside of a block, gets inside the 15 to about the 14. Hey, Eric didn't read that one real well, Bob. I think if he cut to the outside, he'd been gone. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, he cut inside and uh, got caught up in the traffic. As it was, he got a, a solid two. Now Darren Miller comes back in and Marty David comes out. And so it's uh, the usual mule backfield with the exception of uh, they're going to a slot now with no fullback. It's a pro set. Quick pitch goes out to Milner. Cuts inside of a block from Zach Large. Still on his feet and he's down to the five. First and goal for the Fairfield Mules as Darren Miller takes it down to the five-yard line. Well, Stanley, again, as what uh, is the Mules' normal set in, uh, when they run that ground game, offensive line is doing a good job. The backs are giving the good blocks to the guys carrying the ball. And uh, now Mules back in the bone. Lake Milner and Simpson in the backfield. Walters takes the snap. He hands off to Matt Link. Is he in? Touchdown, Mules. Touchdown, Mules. Matt Link from five yards out with seven minutes to go in the first quarter of play as the Mules convert a Red Hill turnover into six points. And they'll be going for two here on the extra point. Mules up six to nothing with seven minutes left in this first quarter. And John Warren comes out to run the uh, two-point conversion play for the Mules. Mules put it on the left hash mark. And Johnny sets them down. They ship to the eye. There's the snap. And John Milner rolls out. Richard Wheat is wide open, and that's two. Richard was so wide open, he almost uh, had too much room. Mules 8, Red Hill Zip. You're listening to Mules Football on WFIW. Hi, everybody. And Link was the only guy there, and they took him out.
Jed Wilson took the kickoff on the five-yard line, and that time the Mules covered it, Bob. Billy Wahoo Efter was downfield and uh, decided that uh, this kickoff coverage stuff has got to cease, and he brought down Jed Wilson inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. That's great coverage. That's good coverage. But it was a very good kick, too, again. Excellent kick by Brooke Lee. The ball was high. Gave everybody time to get down there. It was deep. Mules show a 52 defensive length. First it was high. Then it was, then it was long. <laughs> There's a handoff straight ahead, and running the football is Tully, I believe. Not much yardage there for the sophomore. No, that was Ambrose. I'm sorry, that was Ambrose. He got it out to uh, the 17-yard line, about a three-yard pickup on the play, second and seven. Steve Wilson, a 6'1", 200-pound freshman, carries the play in. He splits out wide to the left. Well, he had a great JV game down here earlier this year, Bob. Steve Wilson did. He really played well. Hardacre. As a man in motion, there's the snap. They pitch it out to Ambrose. He's trying to get wide, and Darren Milner's got him zeroed in and knocks him out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. About the 21. So to bring up third down and a good solid three for the Salukis at their own 21-yard line. So if the Mules can hold here, they'll force a Red Hill punt. Red Hill needs three yards to get a fresh set of downs. Here come the Salukis out of the huddle. Mules lead eight to nothing. We have 5.59 to go in the first quarter. Todd Hardacre, the quarterback, sends Tully in motion. There's the snap. They hand it off to Tully, and he's not going to get the first down. Well, now he might with second effort. Second effort, he, he got the first down. He was hit initially by Eckleberry and Milner, but he rolled forward off that hit and got just enough to move the sticks. First and 10 for Red Hill with the nose of the ball just shy of their own 25-yard line. Yeah, they needed three yards. They got three and a half. That's all it takes, isn't it? That's all it takes. Here come the Salukis with that run-and-shoot look, although they don't throw a lot out of it, I might add. They run more than they shoot. There's the snap. They pitch out to Hardacre, or to Ambrose, rather, and he gets the corner and is brought down after about an eight-yard pickup. A quick pitch to uh, Ambrose, and he got to the outside. And he's a good hard runner, and he picked up about eight yards on the play, maybe nine when they're spotting the ball. Goodness, much more than I thought, almost ten. He just, just a foot shy of a first down. So it's second down and very short, three down here for Red Hill. Let's see what they want to do. They have double splits, two wing backs, and Ambrose at the running back position. There's the snap on the option. They pitch out to Tully, and he is going to be brought down, but not before he gets the first down. Out to about the 39-yard line. He was finally brought down by the Mules on the play. It looked like he might uh, have a little trouble getting out of the backfield, but he did manage to turn that corner and pick up about five on the play. And it's first and 10 for Red Hill at their own 40-yard line. So Red Hill has effectively moved the ball from their own 14 out to their own 40. And have picked up a couple of first downs along the way. Hardacre takes the snap. Ambrose this time has hit the line of scrimmage and lunges forward for a yard, maybe two. Middle of the Mules line. Stack that play up. Give him two out to the 42-yard line where it's second down and eight for Red Hill at their own 42. First quarter of play, 447. The clock's moving. The Mules are up eight to nothing. Here come the Salukis out of the huddle. See how they put up 32 points last week, Bob. Their offense is efficient. Yes, it is. There's the snap. They hand it off to Tully. He's going to be driven down for a loss. A host of Mules on the tackle. Seth Harnden, Marty David, Amos Eckleberry all in there for the Mules, along with Chad Richardson. A loss on the play back to the 41. It'll bring up third down and nine. This would be obviously a passing situation. Let's see if the Mules want to blitz here. Hardacre at 5'7 would also have trouble seeing over the taller Mule defensive lineman. Meals do show blitz. And they are coming. Screen pass is out here to the wing back for a big loss on the play. Matt Hodges along with uh, Marty David and Brooke Clayton there along with Kurt Robbins for the stop. I think Marty was the initial hitter. Carrier on the play for Red Hill was Fred Akers. 
and he lost yardage all the way back to the 35. So that'll bring up fourth and 15 for Red Hill. Kind of an odd play selection there, Bob, on that uh, third and nine. Swing well, pass to the back. We never got out of the backfield. Uh -huh. Wilson, the punt it. Steve Wilson, the freshman. Snap is on the money, and the kick is away. Nice kick coming downfield to John Warren. John is going to be dropped in his tracks. Warren had nowhere to go. He tried to get to the left where a wall was going to be set up, but he didn't have a chance to get out there. But good field position for the Mules. They'll start first and 10 at their own 37. 344 to go here in the first quarter. The Mules leading 8 to nothing. You know, Stanley, one of the things you look at uh, at the Saluka, as you, as you said, the, uh, the offense out of that run and shoot, uh, they do move the ball pretty well. The other thing, you look down the line, you got to give credit to Terry Andrews and folks, Todd Gray and folks up there in the lower level programs up there. Look at the sideline. How many times have you ever seen Red Hill have that many people on the sideline? Long for Jason Baker. It's incomplete. He and Jed Wilson were battling for the football. Baker had a decided height advantage, but he was unable to get his hands on the ball. So that'll bring up second and 10 for the Mules as uh, Kip went for the bundle there and came up a little bit short. Had he laid the pass out another foot or so, uh, might have uh, had some business going there, but it brings up second and 10. Baker goes wide to the right side. Walters takes the snap, takes the pitch out over the middle, complete to Kirk Robbins for about eight yards on the play. It'll bring up second or third down and two for the Mules. Ball at the uh, Mule 40 four yard line they're going to put it so let's call it third and a short three here for the meals richard reed brings the play in from bob hadfield and he wants to talk to jason baker all by himself for some reason he's explaining why he should have run uh, harder that last pattern i guess handoff goes to matt link matt's got the first down i think Looks like he has enough from here, but uh, after last week at Salem, you never know. <laughs> First down. First and 10 for the Mules at their own 48-yard line. You know, I saw a lot of folks through the week. We weren't the only one thought them bad spots. Oh, no. Now, I, I talked to some people who were uh, parallel to uh, a couple of those spots, and they, uh, they were less than amused with the uh, placement of the football. First and 10 from the 48. Walters gets his pass away, and it's incomplete. Kip dumped it. Baker was streaking long, and uh, Kip just dumped it out of bounds because he had some heat on in the backfield. And the Red Hill uh, staff is hollering, where's the receiver? And uh, frankly, they've got a complaint. I tell you what, it's, it's practically impossible to get an intentional grounding call in, in high school football. Oh, yeah, you almost never get it, and that, there's a good reason why. There's a snap. Pitch out goes to Darren Milner. Darren is hit and dropped on a good uh, defensive effort that time by Matt Ambrose. He fought off the block of Zach Large and uh, made an open field tackle on Milner after a two-yard pickup to the 50, which is going to bring up third and eight for the Fairfield Mules. Uh, it looked like uh, Darren had some room to maneuver, but Ambrose did a good job. He fought off the block of Large and made the tackle. Mules face third and eight at midfield. There's the snap. Pop over the middle is almost intercepted. Pass was intended for Baker, but uh, Kip's throw was errant, quite a bit errant, as a matter of fact, and almost picked off by Jed Wilson. So the Mules will have to punt for the first time tonight, leading 8 to nothing with 149 to go here in the first period of play. And Jeremy Ellis will get up over the football. Snap it back to Darren Milner is going to do the punting tonight. John Warren goes in motion. Snap is right on the money. Kick is a dandy. Coming downfield. Get out of bounds. Get out. Stop. 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 Ah, I win the end zone. So we'll bring it out to the 20. That is a 50-yard uh, punt. 50-yard punt for Darren Milner. He could be taking over the conference lead here in a little bit with that 57-yard he booted last week. So Red Hill starts first and 10 at the 20-yard line. And the Mules come back out on defense and are going to need to figure out a way to stop these uh, quick pitches to the outside. It really puts the burden on uh, Brooke Clayton and uh, Kirk Robbins playing the defensive end positions in the corners, Matt Hodges and Jimmy Milner. Danny Hirstley is out of corner right now for the Mules on the right side. 
Tully in motion. There's the snap, and there's a flag down. Tully has the football. It's all coming back on an illegal motion. Uh, he got about five, but that'll come back on illegal motion. Illegal shift is actually what they called. That means two guys are moving at the same time, and that's against the rules. So it'll come back to the 15, where it'll be first and 15 for Red Hill. The pickup was about five on the play, so surely the Mules will take the penalty. It's a no-brainer, Chad. boy. Chad Richardson discussing the options with the official. First and 15 for Red Hill, back at their own 15. 140 left in the first quarter. Mules eight, Red Hill nothing. And Red Hill faces first and long now. Here come the Salukis to the line of scrimmage. Hardacre takes the snap. Quick drop. Pass over the middle. Is caught. And streaking is one man down at the feet. Now Richard Reed makes the tackle, but not before Jeremy Marinholtz almost broke that one all the way. It was just a quick pop over the middle, and he split the seam. It was darn near gone, Bob. He sure was. Matter of fact, I thought he was going to be. When he broke right out of the seam, it looked like he was going to go all the way, but Richard caught up with him. I thought Richard was going to get blocked out. And the only reason he didn't, they were afraid of the clip. I frankly didn't think Hardacre would ever get the ball off. The Mules would look like they were going to sack Hardacre, but he got it away, and Marinholtz made a fine run. And it's first and ten for Red Hill at the Mule 47. They're out of the hole now, aren't they? There's the snap. They pitch it outside for Ambrose, and he slips a tackle. But now Amos Eckleberry drops him down at the 45-yard line for about a yard and a half pickup on the play. Good job by Amos. As uh, Darren Milner turned that play in, and then Amos Eckleberry cleaned up nicely from his uh, linebacker position. Give him a short yard and a half on the play. Let's call it second down and nine for Red Hill at the Mule 45. Mule's in a 52 now. Kind of an offset 52 as well. Tully in motion. There's the snap. Ambrose was hit at the line of scrimmage but slipped that tackle and now gets the first down all the way down to the 31. Marty David had him in the backfield and didn't wrap him up and put him away, and Ambrose got out there to the 32, they put it now, for first and 10 for Red Hill. Well, sometimes there's such a small difference between stacking a team up and letting them get a first down. So Red Hill has a fresh set of downs at the Mule 32, going for the tying touchdown. Tully in motion, there's the snap. Mix up in the backfield, and Hardacre just goes forward for what he can get. And that's about a yard as he is finally wrapped up by Brooke Clayton. Well, that's more than that. I thought they were on the 30. I guess not. They got about uh, four on that. So it'll be second and six. First quarter is expired. Mules eight, Red Hill zip. You're listening to Mules football on WFIW. As we return to play, it'll be second down and six for Red Hill at the Mule 28 yard line. And quite frankly, Bob, Red Hill has uh, not only played with the Mules, but they have uh, done quite well. Did I go down too far? Skipped one. Oh, okay. Well, I'll catch my later. Yeah, they really have. Mules got the break on the turnover, you know, to, for their score. They hand it off outside to Akers, and he is not going to get anywhere. He doesn't get the line of scrimmages. They tried a little counter play, but the Mules were all there. Clayton, Robbins, Eckleberry, Milner, Hodges, they were all there on the stop. Third and six for Red Hill at the Mule 28-yard line. And you would think this is a passing situation here, but Ambrose is a good runner. We'll see what they do. Well, with field position, too, Stanley, they don't have to get it all on one. And we're looking at four-down territory. Hardacre takes the snap. He takes a short drop, rolls to the outside. He's got time now, but his pass is well off the mark. Pass was intended for Steve Wilson. He was covered by Danny Hesterley, and, uh, well, he didn't have a prayer catching that one. It was well off the mark. Fourth down and six for Red Hill. Now it is a passing situation. You were right. They could have run there and uh, gone for it in two downs, but... Now at fourth and sixth, the meal 28, I think they'd have to throw the ball here. Clayton came in, put some heat on, and uh, he was picked up nicely by Ambrose, who stayed in to block that time rather than going out on the pattern, and that gave Hardinger time to get the ball away. 
Here come the Salukis. They're at the mule 28 with a fourth and six. There's the snap. Again, he wants to throw. Gets the pass away. Richard Reed picks it off. Here comes Richard up the sidelines. Makes the move. Now he fumbles the ball, and Marty David gets on it. The Mules will have it. So it'll be the Mules ball, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line, and Red Hills turned it over twice now. The Mules will see if they can take advantage of this second turnover. Richard Reed uh, read that one all the way, Bob. He had it... Uh, from the get-go. Richard did an excellent job. It looked like uh, the pass was going to him. He just jumped up and grabbed it, started back the other way with it. Made my heart flutter a little bit when he fumbled. Kip Walters takes the snap. He hands it off straight ahead to Matt Link, who gets about five on the play up near the 30-yard line. It's going to bring up second down. Let's call it a six for the Mules, as they'll put it uh, just shy of the 30. And it'll be a four-yard gain for Matt Link. Here come the Mules out of the huddle. Second down and six, just shy of their own 30-yard line. In a pro set. There's the snap. Pitch out to Eric Simpson. Oh, he's got a lot of room. He's got blockers. He's got the first down and more. He's out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Good look at play by the Mules as they swept for about 10 yards on that one. And it'll be first and 10 for the Mules at their own 40-yard line. Good blocks out in front, but Cam Tullis right there, Stanley, let out him to turn the corner. And then Darren Milner got a downfield block for him, too. That's one thing about the Mule backs, Bob. They know that uh, even though they carry the football, they have to block for their mates as well, and they do a good job of it. There's the snap. Handoff goes to Eric Simpson. Eric's got about six. He's got about eight. He's got about ten as he's brought down near midfield. Eric Simpson on the carry, and that'll move the sticks. It's a first down for the Mules. As they get it just inside Red Hill territory by the length of the football. Also, Bob, earlier this week in practice, the Mules were uh, extensively working on wide receiver blocking drills. Hmm. Interesting. There's the snap. Handoff goes to Darren Milner. He's got a lot of room to run. He's got about five yards to the Red Hill 44. Again, that mule line, Bob, they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. And when they do that, that just makes the mule offense look so good. Things get really dangerous then. Again, up front, Big Dog Townsend, Zach Large on the right side, Chad Richardson, Cam Tullis on the left side, the tight ends, Kurt Robbins. Jeremy center, Ellis the center. Center of Jeremy Ellis, and they do right behind Jeremy, and I believe Matt Link has the first down. He has the first down at the Red Hill 39-yard line, and they'll move the sticks once again. And Yeah, you, you said it, Bob. They went right behind Jeremy, and he uh, took his man out. Big Jim Lawson, who is uh, the nose guard, made about uh, 15 tackles last week against Karma, and they were talking about how uh, he dominated the game. He hasn't been a factor tonight. Walters long for Baker. He's got it. Touchdown, Mules! A 39-yard touchdown pass from Kip Walters to Jason Baker. Tell you what, when Baker catches them, they're usually touchdowns, aren't they? He's not going to catch him. <laughs> he sped right by the cornerback and went on into the end zone. And the Mules will go for the deuce, leading 14 to nothing with 9.27 to go here in the second quarter. Kip Baker once cranked it up and went to Baker down the sidelines. He got it and scooted on in. Here we go for the deuce. John Warren puts him in the eye. There's the snap. And John Warren rolls out. Still rolling. He's going to run it in himself. And he's in for two. So the Mules lead 16-zip. You're listening to Fairfield Mules football on WFIW. Every time. Kick coming down to McAdow. He's trying to get to the outside, and the Mules are going to rough him up and knock him out of bounds at about the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. Let's see where they spot the football. Matt McAdow. Looks like about the 37 they're going to put it down. Maybe 38. 38. 38. So Red Hill has good field position to start this set of downs. First and 10 at their own 38-yard line. 9.20 to go in the second quarter. Mules leading now 16 to nothing. And both scores, Stanley, coming off Red Hill turnovers. Take advantage of what they give you. That's right. Red Hill with that run-and-shoot offense, but again, they don't throw a lot out of it. They're more, uh, more of a runaway in a team. 
There's the handoff straight ahead goes Ambrose. He gets to the 40. He very nearly fumbled the football. Amos Eckleberry, Seth Harnden on the tackle along with Kirk Robbins. And they'll give him a two-yard gain on the play out to the 40. It'll be second down and eight for Red Hill. Just across the 40, almost the 41. Nine minutes left in the second quarter. Mules lead 16 to nothing. Here come the Salukis out of the huddle. Hardacre looks over the Mule defense, and the Mules are in a 43 right now. The Mules almost jump, but do not. There's the snap. They pitch it outside to Ambrose. He's got the corner, and he is whacked hard and knocked out of bounds. But I think he got enough for the first down. Jimmy and Darren Milner, uh, the brother combination, knocked him out of bounds. But it's close to and probably is a first down. Along with John Warren. It is first down. When they started that play, uh, they had good blocking, and you knew they were going to get good yardage, Bob. Uh, there was not a whole lot of folks out there. Well, again, the, the end got caught inside, and uh, that when that happens, that allows the, the play to get outside. Well, Matt Link's going to try his hand at defensive end now as he comes into the lineup. Feels a show of 43. Marin Holson, football, loose football, a big scramble's on, and who's got it? Mules say they do. Mules say they do, and they do. Seth Harnden's on it for the Mules. So the Mules get their third turnover of the night as Ambrose fumbled the football. The Mules have it first and 10 at the Red Hill 48-yard line. 8.35 to go in the second quarter. The Mules already up 16 zip. We'll try to put a third touchdown on the board after this Red Hill turnover. Pro set for the Mules. There's the snap. Pitch out. Uh-oh. Fumble for the Mules. And Red Hill's got it. They're running with it. And the big guy being brought down, carrying the football for Red Hill. Derek Wilson. Derek Wilson. He is a six foot, 245-pound sophomore. And he picked up the fumble and uh, went down to the Mule 38. So the Mules turn it right back over. Let's see if this fires up Red Hill. The Lord give it, and the Lord take, take it away. away. Yes. <laughs> Here come the Salukis as they catch a break, and they have it first and ten at the meal 38. Hardacre has Tully in motion. There's the snap. They pitch out to Ambrose. Again, he's got room to the outside. He slips a tackle, and Richard Reed collars him down at the 31. Be short of the first down, but uh, again, Bob, uh, they turned in the end and the uh, corner on that play. Jimmy Milner came up from the corner and had a shot at him but couldn't get him down. The end was nowhere in sight. So the Mules are having a little problems defensing that play. Scott Furhoff told me earlier this week when he looked at the films of Salem, he, he, didn't, he couldn't see how we won. <laughs> we had so many defensive situations where we were just uh, totally out of position. They worked hard on that this week, but evidently uh, Red Hill's exploiting some of those holes. Right straight ahead goes Ambrose, and uh, Darren Milner throws him back, but not before he gets the first down. Ambrose will have the first down for Red Hill at the Mule 27-yard line, and it's first and 10 for the Salukis. Mules led 16 to nothing and uh, had a turnover by Red Hill, and we're ready to go on offense again. But on the very first play, the Mules fumbled a pitch out, and Red Hill got it. Now it's Red Hill's ball first and 10 at the Mule 27. They've been down in this area before and turned it over on an interception. Hardacre takes the snap, wants to throw. He is hit as he throws it, and there's a flag down as well. So the pass is well incomplete. No Red Hill Saluki within a block of that one, and there is a flag down, and evidently it's holding on Red Hill the way the Mules are clapping. Hardacre just let that one fly, Bob. There's nobody there. Richard Reed was the closest person to it, and he wasn't close. Mules will likely take the penalty here. This will be a major walk-off of 10 yards. Move the ball back out to the 30, almost the 38-yard line, and bring up first and uh, 20 for the Red Hill Salukis. More than that. Uh, 8, 3, 11, about 21. So Red Hill first and uh, 21 at their own 30, or the Mule 38 yard line, pardon me. There's the snap. Again, Hardacre wants to throw. He gets it over the middle. It's complete to Marin Holtz, or check that Tully, and he's down to the Mule 16. That's first down. So the Mules let him right out of the hole as Hardacre got his pass away over the middle to Tully, and he, I'm sure it's enough for the first, isn't it? Yeah. 
They're looking at it closely, and I think they're going to, yeah, it's going to be a first down. First and 10 for Red Hills, the Mule's 16-yard line. As it looked like the Mules had got them into a bind, but uh, such was not the case. As they got right out of it with uh, Hard Acres pass to Tully, and it's first and 10 for Red Hills, the Mule's 16. Mules lead 16 to nothing, 6.38 to go in the second period of play. There's the snap. The handoff goes to Ambrose. He is down near the nine. That'll be second down and about three for the Mules, or for the Salukis. As uh, Matt Ambrose carried the football. So, here come the Salukis out of the huddle with an opportunity to cut the mule lead in half as they're at the nine yard line now. Ambrose has hit at the nine, tries to get outside and there's nothing there. You'll count several mules getting off that pile. Brooke Clayton, Kurt Robbins, Marty David, Chad Richardson, Darren Milner, Jimmy Milner, they're all there. Yard loss, it's third down and uh, three for Red Hill at the 10 yard line. 5.38 to go in the second quarter, the clock is moving. Big play here. Hardacre sets him down. Marin Holtz in motion. There's the snap. He rolls out. A lot of room for Marin Holtz. He's going to get the first down. I think. Yeah, he does. Be first and goal for Red Hill about the five yard line. Again, that option play, Bob, it's just eating up the mules. They're just not playing it well at all. Well, as you said, they uh, they worked on it this week, but evidently uh, it has not turned out as expected. First and goal to go. Mules put in their goal line defense. As Red Hill comes up to the line of scrimmage with a first and goal to go at the five. Man in motion. Hardacre takes the snap. Pitch out to Ambrose. And he's in for the end zone for a touchdown. Ambrose made one spin move at about the three and eluded all the mule tacklers. And goes in from five yards out with 4.55 to go here in the second period to make it 16 to 6. If anybody thought this was going to be a route, they're mistaken. It may turn out to be that way, but the Red Hill is putting themselves quite nicely on the football field right now. They feel like they've got a chance at the playoffs. They're 2 and 2 on the campaign. Red Hill going for the deuce. There's the snap, and they're not going to get it. This time, Hardacre's dropped by Darren Milner. It's the Mules 16, Red Hill 6. You're listening to Mules Football on WFIW. Wilson to kick it off for Red Hill. 4.55 to go in the second quarter. Mules lead 16 to 6. A short kick coming downfield. Taken by Brett McGuire. Brett's going to get to the 30, 35, 40, 45, and knock that about to the 46. A good hard run back by Brett McGuire, Bob. Excellent job by Brett. He broke about three tackles over. I thought he was going to get tackled back there about the 30. And uh, he got away and got up, got the Mules in good field position. Mules will start first and 10 at their own 46-yard line. Almost 47. With uh, 447 to go here in the second quarter, certainly plenty of time to get one on the board. As the Mules' lead has been sliced to 10 points. And now the officials stop play for Red Hill, a Red Hill timeout. timeout. You're listening to Mules Football on WFW.
Well, it'll be the Mules ball first and 10 when we resume play. The Mules have it at their own 46. Four minutes and 47 seconds left in the first half. The Mules lead 16 to 6 over the Red Hill Salukis. Jeremy Ellis up over the football. Baker wide to the right. Bone in the backfield. There is the snap. And the handoff goes to the second man through Darren Milner. And Darren's got about seven. Ah, maybe six. Let's see where they spot it. It'll be in Red Hill territory at about the 48-yard line. About a six-yard gain on the play. Second and four for the Mules at the Red Hill 48. 4.28 and the clock is rolling. We're in the second quarter. Mules leading 16-6 to and have the football second down and four at the Red Hill 48. Baker wide to the right side. There's the snap. Again, the second man through. That is Darren Milner. He's got the first down. First and 10 Mules at the Red Hill 41-yard line. Mules have uh, been able to efficiently drive the football when they've had it on the ground. And they mixed in some nice passes to accumulate 16 first half points. We'll see what they do here on first and 10 at the Red Hill. Let's call it the Red Hill 42. There's a split receiver, Richard Reed, to the right side. There's the snap. Milner with the ball. Darren's got a hole. Darren's running hard. And he is hit and dropped after a pickup down to the Red Hill 34, maybe the 33. About a seven-yard gain on the play for Darren. He'll put it back at the 34, where it's second down and a long two, short three, depending on how you want to look at it. Well, let's look at it this way. The, <laughs> the Red Hill at three yards to go up to the Mules at two. Two. And we got a helmet problem here in the middle of the... Red Hill defense. Big uh, Jim Lawson, the 6'5", 270-pound junior. Now he's all set to go. Walters takes the snap. And straight ahead, Matt Link, and he's got the first down. First and 10 for the Mules just inside the Red Hill 30. 317. The clock stops to reset the chains. Ball length inside the 30. First and 10 for the Mules. They're beginning to get toward the red zone. That's from 20 yards on in. From there, you ought to get some points on the board, according to the football experts, when you get in that area. Pitch out goes to Eric Simpson. He gets a block from Cam. He is down the sidelines near another first down. Eric had slowed up a little bit because he, he just trapped that ball on his hip as he almost bundled that pitch again, but uh, did a good job of getting a hold of the ball, bringing it up, and uh, picked up the first down. They'll put it down at the 18 where the Mules have it first and 10. 2.56 to go in the first half of play. Marty David comes in from the sidelines. And here come the Mules out of the huddle. Milner, David, and Link in the backfield. Walters takes the snap. Handoff goes to Matt. Matt's going to score. Matt Link from 18 yards out is in the end zone for the touchdown. Boy, they blew open a big, big hole, didn't they? Right up the gut. Jeremy Ellis, Chad Richardson, Doug Townsend, right up the middle. The two guards in the center opened up a mammoth hole, and Matt, well, as soon as he broke the line of scrimmage, Bob, I, you know, I said, Matt's going to score. There was no doubt about it, as he just blew into the end zone. So the meal's going for the deuce here. They've uh, got two out of two on that. There's the snap. There's John Warren rolling out. He is still on his feet. Throws the ball to Darren Miller, and he's got it. So the Mules get the two. John Warren took a heck of a shot as he delivered the ball. And uh, Marty David's checking on him now, but John's up and okay. Mules up on top of Red Hill, 24 to 6. Brooke Clayton has the ball teed up at the 40. Mules lead 24 to 6. Clayton kicks it away. High kick coming downfield to McAdow at about the 13. Trying to get to the outside. Now reverses his field and has got a little business here. He's up to about the 40, still on his feet. Finally, Matt Hodges drags him down at the 42-yard line. and uh, Poor coverage by the Mules. Very poor coverage, Bob. They left their lanes. Uh, I know when uh, Coach Hatfield sees that one on film, he's not going to be happy. They put him at the 43, where Red Hill starts first and 10. Outstanding field position, 2.20 to go here in the first half. Let's see if Red Hill wants to throw the ball here and try and get some points on the board before the half expires. Hardacre has Ambrose right behind him. That's the big gun. But he wants to throw, and his pass is away, and 
picked off by Jimmy Milner. Jim cuts to the middle of the field and is brought down at the 45. So the Mules have it back with 159 to go. Jim Milner, the underrated Milner of the two brothers. Well, Stanley, give, give, let's give a little credit there to uh, Kurt Robbins on the the uh, rush, on the pass rush. Uh, you were talking a minute ago, the Hot Acre is only 5'7", and Kurt at about 6'4". He came in, jumped in the air, and Hardacre had to loft it over him. And when he did that, that gave Milner time to get underneath it, and Jimmy picked it off and brought it back. Yeah, Jimmy saw that floater said, thank you very much. Pitch out goes to Darren Milner. He's got Cam Tullis ahead of him. Darren's going down the sideline. He's still on his feet. There's a flag down. There's going to be a clip on the mules. Well, we got all the way down to the 19, but it's coming back on a clip. Well, it'll come back from the spot, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're still going to be looking at approximately first and 10. Illegal block in the back, so they're going to call rather than a clip. Well. And as the flag's laying at the 28, so it'll come back from there and still be first down. One thirty-four to go in the first half. Mules lead 24 to 6. And they would have been in business at the 18, but the penalty rolls it all the way back to the 44-yard line where it's going to be first down and uh, let's call it nine. So all that gained one yard. <laughs> Is there a timeout? No, I don't think so. Mr. Hadfield is speaking with the uh, official. And now Red Hill does call a timeout. Let's take a 30-second break. This is Fairfield Mules football. And the Mules will come up with uh, something here in a minute uh, 34 to uh, go 30 or 44 yards, Bob. Uh, Mules, as you know, can either grind it out or get it in one big pot. And Bob Hadfield has told Kip Walters what he wants to do. So he has the Mules all gathered in the huddle. They're waiting for the officials to blow the ball in play. And they have not done so yet. And they do now. First and nine for the Mules at the Red Hill 44-yard line. Here come the Mules to the line of scrimmage with a pro set in the backfield. Quick pop pass is incomplete intended for Darren Milner. And uh, that'll bring up second down and nine for the Mules. Kip took a one-step drop and uh, was pressured somewhat, and the pass was uh, down at Darren's feet. If I had to guess, I'd say intentionally, because uh, Red Hill had that one pretty well defensed. Minute 31 to go in the uh, first half as Walters brings him up to the line. There's the snap. And Matt Lake has a lot of room to run. Matthew has a first down and more as he gets down to the Red Hill 29-yard line where it's going to be first and 10 for the Mules. They pop Matt Lake right up the middle. and It'll be first and 10 for the Mules at the 29 with a minute 25 to go in the first half of play as the clock now starts as the Mules hit the line of scrimmage. Baker goes wide to the right side. Walters sets him down. There's the snap. Matt Link straight ahead once again. This time the sledding's a little bit tougher, but he does manage to pick up about three or four yards on the flight. Looks like three to the uh, 26. We'll bring up second and seven for the Mules, who are quickly out of the huddle at the one-minute mark of the first half. There's the snap. Darren Milner gets the handoff, cuts to the outside. Darren Milner still on his feet, still on his feet, now goes out of bounds to stop the clock at about the 14-yard line. 47 seconds left in the first half as Darren Milner made the extra effort to get out of bounds and save the timeout. And they'll put it down at the 14-yard line where it's first and 10 for the Fairfield Mules with 47 seconds left here in the first half of play. Mules lead 24 to six and are threatening to uh, put more on the board before halftime. Handoff goes up the middle to Milner and he is down to about the 10 or 11 yard line and the Mules call the timeout. Let's take a 30 second break. This is Fairfield Mules football. Uh, six for the Mules at the nine yard line of the Red Hill Salukis. 
with 39 seconds left in the first half of play. The Mules called the timeout. I believe that's their second timeout of the night. And uh, they would have one left at least. And they have nine yards to maneuver the football before halftime. 39 seconds showing on the clock. Mules have a 18 point lead and are looking to put uh, some more on the board. Officials blow the ball in play, and here come the Mules out of the huddle. Second down and six at the nine yard line of Red Hill. Kip Walters takes the snap. Wants to throw the football into the corner of the end zone and incomplete. He dumped it out of play, quite frankly, as Kurt Robbins was double covered over there in the corner of the end zone and Kip threw it out of bounds. 35 seconds left to go. That'll bring up third down and six for the Mules. As Kip Walters takes the opportunity to go to the sideline and check with Bob Hadfield. The officials uh, will now blow the ball into play. So the Mules are efficiently using their time. Here come the Mules out of the huddle. Third down and six at the Red Hill nine. There's the snap. Pitch out goes to Eric Stimson. Eric is going to be close to the first down. He, well, one official stopped the clock. One winds it up. What's the deal here? It's still running. Now they stop the clock as the Mules call the timeout. And uh, Eric evidently did not get out of bounds, and he did not get the first down. It's going to be fourth down and two for the Mules with 25 seconds to go in the first half. We're going to keep it right here as uh, the Mules are now on the seven-yard line with a fourth and two. They've got to get just, just a little bit inside the five for a first down. And uh, Bob Hadfield has uh, quickly told them, uh, spoken to the Mules and told them what he has in mind here. And now he takes the opportunity the rest of the time out to discuss things further with Kip Walters. The Mules face a fourth and two at the Red Hill seven. They've got to get just a little bit inside the five for a first down. And uh, if the Mules do get the first down, they're going to have to quickly uh, line up if they don't get the touchdown. So let's see what the Mules do right here. 25 seconds, you can get several plays off, but if they go for the first down here, and get it, they've got to get the first down uh, initially. That's the big thing right now, fourth down. They're going to have to line up quickly. Here come the Mules with a pro set. There's the snap. Quick pop over the middle, touchdown Mules. Kurt Robbins says Kip Walters fires a seven-yard touchdown pass to make it 30-6, to six, the Mules on top, as Kurt was wide open in the end zone for the touchdown. 22 seconds left in the first half. The Mules will go for the deuce. John Warren sets them down and shifts them to the eye. Snap. John rolls out. Has time to look for somebody. Now it is uh, incomplete in the end zone as he was uh, hit on the play by the Salukis and the extra point no good. Meals up 30 to 6. You're listening to the Meals football on WFIW. Air Force. As the ball teed up at the 40-yard line, there's 22 seconds left in the first half. It's the Fairfield Mules 30, the Red Hill Saluki 6. As Clayton gets set to boot it away. There's the boot. It's a short kick coming downfield to Jason Tully. Tully heading straight. Now he cuts to the outside. Look out here. Well, he gets all the way out to the 45, and I'll tell you what, these kickoffs are becoming an adventure, Bob. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the, the mule coverage on the kickoff is less than stellar, folks. Less you know, than stellar. And early in the year, in the first two ball games, it was very good. It was very good. Against Mount Carmel, they didn't get anywhere on kickoff. Well, we'll see what happens here. Red Hill has one play left if they choose to run it. They get the pitch out, out to Ambrose. It's a loose football, and he just covers it up. So Ambrose lost back to the 39. That's the end of the first half of play. Our halftime score, the Fairfield Meals 30, the Red Hill Saluki 6. You're listening to Meals Football on WFIW. Talk that you get around, so uh, maybe I have been uh, a little misinformed. Yeah, you know, everybody says, Lord, feels awful. Well, I look back, they played, uh, was it the Ignis 7 0 ball game? And. Uh, they beat uh, Olney 7 0, or was it Carmel 7 0? I know they had two 7 0 ball games. They lost one, they won one. So when you're dealing with that low of a point total, you know you've got a good defense. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's not, they played uh, 
Newton either the first week or the second week, and then I'm, I'm trying to think who they played their other non-conference foe. Robinson and Robinson blitzed them yeah. 42 zip, I yeah. think it was. Of course, uh, Robinson was the rated number one team in the state in yeah. 3A. You know, the other thing about uh, Red Hill, Stanley, uh, that I said to the coaching staff there before the ball game, uh, they're uh, a little bit dismay at uh, the fact that uh, because of their schedule, they'll be 3A. Well, their enrollment, their, their football enrollment will make them a 3A team. And uh, so, uh, you know, they made the playoffs before at 2A, and they felt like maybe they could go somewhere in the 2A level. They feel they get it. If they do make the playoffs at 3A, they're, you know, play Robinson the first round because of their proximity. It'd be one game and out kind of a deal. Yeah. So, but anyway, we're set to go here for the second half of football. The Mules will get the ball, and Steve Wilson will kick it for Red Hill. It's coming downfield to Matt Lake. Matt catches it on the run at the 15. He goes straight up the middle to about the 34-yard line where the Mules will start first and 10. By the way, while I'm thinking of when we mentioned the volleyball, is I want to give uh, Monty Aldridge and his cross-country people credit. They uh, won their first dual meet last week against North City Omaha infield by, by one point. I saw that. So congratulations to Monty and his Harriers. The uh, Lady Mules tennis team doing well. The golf team is... 17 and 4, I think. Yeah, there. they're doing extremely well. Kip Walters takes the snap. They hand off straight ahead to Matt Link, and Matt gets a couple yards across the 35 to about the 36 or 7. About three on the play. Let's call it second down and seven for the Mules at their own 37 yard line. We're just underway here in the third period of play, and the Mules lead in the ball game 30 to 6. Danny Hesterly comes in from the sideline. Carrying the play from Coach Bob Hatfield. Danny, a 5'11", 170-pound sophomore. He'll play at a halfback slot. There's the snap. And Darren Miller gets the handoff. And Darren gets a couple of hard yards to about the 39-yard line, where it's going to bring up third down and about four for the Mules. Almost five. So uh, third down and uh, not a gimme here for the Mules if they're on 39. Third down and... Uh, let's call it four and a half. And Kip Walters wants to uh, switch around the mule receivers. There's the snap. Walters wants to throw. Pass for Walters is almost in, intercepted as it was knocked away. And the mules will be forced to punt their first possession of the second half. The ball was, excuse me, go ahead. The ball is behind Richard. And uh, he got his hand back and got his hand on it. Thought he could pull it in. But uh, what frightened me on that deal, Stanley, when he got his hand on it, the ball went right straight up in the air. And the Red Hill defender was right there. And I was afraid he was going to pick it off. Dustin Williams, a 5'8", 195 senior, almost gathered it in. Darren Milner back to kick. Jeremy Ellis to snap it. Fourth down and about five for the Mules. John Warren goes in motion. Snaps right on the money. Kick is a terrible kick. It's a squibber, and it's going to take a Red Hill roll. It'll roll dead at about the Red Hill 46-yard line. Well, there goes so, the old punting average. Yeah, about a 14-yard about a kick for the Mules that time. That's not what you want, but those things happen. So the Mule defense will have to buck it up. Yeah, we've seen mule punts go backwards. Oh, we've seen all. We've, <laughs> I tell you what, I could write a book about mule punts. In, in 23 years, I've seen everything imaginable out of a mule punt unit. They put it at the 47, where Red Hill starts first and 10, trailing 30-6. to six. Let's see if they want to start throwing the ball down by 24. Fumble oh. snap, and a big scramble, and the Mules have it. Kurt Robbins gets it. That's Kurt's fifth fumble recovery this season, Bob. Well, I'll tell you what, he had a nose right for it. The ball went on the carpet, and I thought it was going to go carpet <laughs> on the turf. And I thought it was going to go right underneath uh, Hardacre, but it hit him on the shin it looked like or some, something shot backwards eh? it popped it out behind him and kurt was right there to bounce on it and so the mules are back in business well it'll be first and ten for the mules at the red hill 42 yard line after the turnover i believe that's red hill's fourth of the night if i'm not mistaken it is mules Third. have a glossy takeaway average there's the snap and matt link is going to lose yardage back to 45. coming in for red hill was big Derek wilson who uh, had him collared back at the 44-yard line. So a two-yard loss on the play. It's second down and 12 for the Mules. And uh, Richard Reed brings in the play from Bob Hatfield. 
You know what happens in the second half of games when you're up 24 points, Bob, and things like that happen? Mm. When film day comes on Monday, the players try to crawl under desks because they start getting a little lax. It's not pretty. Walters wants to throw. Downfield all alone is Richard Reed, and he does not hold on to the football. Yes, he does. Oh, he went out of bounds. I thought it bounced. No, he got it. He's out at about the 12. Oh, okay. I, I can, well, I mean, I'm getting old. I could have swore that ball bounced <laughs> off his hands. No, he reached back and, and hauled it in and got pushed out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. Well, the Mules Maybe have the a 13. big play there, and it's uh, sec uh, first down and uh, 10 at the 12. Now, maybe when I saw Wilson flash in front, maybe I mistook it. Better go get my eyes checked, I guess. <laughs> they never have been a problem. There's the snap, and Walters on a broken play is going to eat it. And Bob Hadfield's hot. Mm. Oh, brother. Marty Davis is going to go in at halfback. He started to run on the field. Bob Collard even brought him back for an extra word. <laughs> we'll have to check it for a little whiplash later on that. Danny Esterley, the sophomore, and uh, Coach Hadfield are going to have a private conversation on the sidelines. I think Danny went the wrong way. Folks. Somebody did, that's for sure. There's the snap. Handoff goes to Darren Milner. He's got some room to run. He'll be down back close to the original line of scrimmage. It'll bring up third and about 10 for the Mules. I'm wondering about Eric Simpson, Bob. We haven't seen Eric uh, this half, and we didn't see much in the second quarter, remember? Mm-hmm. I don't know what the problem is. You know, Eric got dinged pretty good last week up at Salem. Ran pretty well in the first half, though. I didn't see him get dinged again. Here come the Mules out of the huddle. Third down and 10 at the Red Hill 12. There's the snap. Walters wants to throw the football. Pass to Marty David is complete, but Marty's not going to get anywhere with it. He's going to lose yardage, as a matter of fact, back to the 15. He flared out, and Kip couldn't find any other receivers, so he threw it to Marty, but uh, a loss back to the 15-yard line. So that'll bring up fourth down and uh, 13 for the Mules back at the Red Hill 15-yard line. And uh, Kip Walters goes over to check with Bob Hadfield about what he wants. And uh, 724 showing in the third quarter as the Mules face a fourth and 13 at the Red Hill 15-yard line. They get out of this, they're going to be lucky. Well, nonetheless, the, the Salukis will be in. in they're not going to get the playoff. They, they, they are switching receivers around and people all over the place. And finally, Kip Walters says, let's call the timeout before we get a five-yard delay of the game penalty. And uh, the Natalie attired Bob Hatfield comes to the field and uh, explains to the Mules in vociferous tones that they uh, need to get a little more mentally alert out there. Well, you know, it, it's one of the things that you talked about a while ago, Stan. That it's uh, You get up 24 points. Mules are up 30-6. to six. We're looking at 7 3 to go in the third quarter. When you have a 24-point lead... Uh, you know, you have a tendency to, you know, well, we'll ho-hum this, we can march down the field, we can do this anytime we want to, and you get a little lax, as you mentioned a while ago. But uh, Coach Hadfield is explaining to them that uh, he is not going to let this happen, that we are going to stay focused, you're going to run the play right, or you're going to be standing over there next to me. <laughs> there were some Mule fans asking me this week, Bob, if there'd be a letdown if the Mules had uh, uh, stubbed their toe the rest of the way, and... Uh, I said, no, we have the right man at the right time for the job in Mr. Hatfield. Uh, he will not allow the Mules to stub their toe, I don't believe. No, I don't think so either. Fourth down and 13 for the Mules at the Red Hill 15. 7.03 to go in the third quarter. Mules up 30-6. to six. There's the snap. And it was going to be a reverse. And uh, it was fumbled and recovered by the Mules, but Red Hill get the ball. It's going to be a reverse to Jason Baker, but uh, Darren Milner never had a chance to get involved. No, good job by Red Hill. Uh, they sniffed it out and came right up and uh, stuffed it before it ever had a chance to develop. And uh, the Salukis did a good job. Well, had the ball gotten off to Jason, he had a world of room to run. But mm. uh, as you said, Red Hill made sure that didn't happen. So they'll take over on downs at about the 22-yard line. They have Tully in motion. Hardacre takes the snap. They pitch out to Ambrose. Ambrose is going to be hitting the backfield and drop. Jimmy Miller coming up from his corner position. Got enough shirt to bring him down for a loss on the play. And uh, that's uh, the key to that uh, sweep, Bob. Jimmy came up and made the stop. 
Jimmy did a good job of getting around the blocker at that time. Got up, couldn't make the good hard hit, but he got a hold of that shirt and uh, got him for about a four-yard loss. So we're looking at second and 14. Jim's job on that is to turn it in. Now, he, if he makes the tackle, great, but if he makes sure he doesn't get the corner, he's done his job. Hardacre takes the snap. He wants to throw the football, and he's going to be sacked. Chad Richardson there along with Seth Harnden and uh, Doug, or Todd Hardacre. Doug's son, by the way. <laughs> he has dropped back inside the 15 to about the 12-yard line. I know the I've defense. been a while when I start talking about the kids and kids that played before. Uh, the defense is doing a better job of moving up that way than the offense did. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, it's back there where the Mules uh, had started their fourth down play. So Red Hill has third down and long here, about 20. Hardacre wants to throw the football. He is going to roll out of the pocket. Now he tucks it and runs, and Amos Eppleberry labels him at the 20-yard line. Amos has played very well tonight getting his first start of the year, Bob, I think. I do, too, Stanley. He's, he's done exactly what he's supposed to do at linebacker, and uh, Amos liked that, and thinking if he does well, maybe he'll get another shot at that. I'm not mistaken. Amos is a sophomore, isn't he? Junior. Is he a junior? Yes, he is. There's the snap on the punt to Wilson. It's almost blocked. He does get it away, and John Warren's going to be one against 11 here. Hit them sidelines, Johnny. Good job, John. Mills went for the punt block. They didn't get it. When John Warren caught the ball, he looked up, and there were 11 Salukis there waiting on him. <laughs> John returns it back to the Radio 47, where the Mills are going to go without a huddle. They need a halfback, however. And Eric Simpson is going to go in. So the going without a huddle is uh, going to lose its uh, – oh, Red Hill has an injured player. It is Steve Wilson who punted the football. So that's going to stop play anyway. Yeah. I was Steve. about to say the meals going without a huddle is going to be negated by uh, not having the personnel, but Wilson is down. and uh, They weren't going to get the playoff anyway, even if they had the personnel in there. I don't know what happened to him, but I saw him. He went to the official, and, and, uh, and then as the official turned around, he went to the ground and is sitting up. Uh, like he was dizzy, and uh, I'm not sure just exactly what what his problem was. He's got a case of the wobbles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. He got the wobbles. Yeah, that's all it is. I think he just got a little uh, bell ringing. Answer the phone. You'll be okay, Steve. Mama's calling. That happens sometimes, and, and when they say you get your bell ring, it does. It rings, folks. I can guarantee you that. Pitch out to Darren Milner. Darren's got some blockers down the sideline. Whoa, what a collision and a loose football. Did Darren get it back? I think he did. He yes. did. It'll be first and ten. It was a head-over-heels collision out there. The ball came loose, but Darren got it back, and it's first and ten for the Mules at the Red Hill 38-yard line, and the Mules are going out of – or 34-yard line, rather, and the Mules are going without a huddle. There's the whistle. Walters takes the snap. Wants to throw the football. It is complete. There's a flag down, however. Matt Lane caught the football inside the 20, but there's a flag down, and it's going to come back, if I'm not mistaken. I'll bet you that's holding. Yeah, it is. And it was. And when, you know, you get to a certain stage in your life, Bob, you can almost guess those penalties. Yeah. To well, really throw the flag. Yeah. I can say you can about guess it as to who throws that flag as to what the penalty is going to be. And the ball uh, will be brought back. The flag's laying at the 38. So mark it back to the 48. It's going to be first down in a bundle for the Mules. 11, uh, well, almost 49. Let's call it uh, first and about 25. Okay. 418 left in the third. Kip Walters sets him down. There's the snap. Darren Milner straight ahead. He was uh, tripped up at the line of scrimmage, but he managed to get hit for about four or five yards. Down to the Red Hill 44, where it's going to bring up second down and still long, but about uh, 20 now. Richard Reed will uh, bring the play in for Bob Hadfield. Well, the Mules have controlled things in this third quarter, Bob. No points up on the board. Yeah, it's one of those deals where uh, 
you know, they've they've had the ball most of the time and, and moved it around, but uh, the mistakes have cost them. Walters wants to throw, and it hit Darren Miller in the back. Darren never looked up. Well, a little miscommunication there. Well, yeah, I think it was. I think it was the hook and ladder, and Darren was looking for the pitch, and Kip uh, had to throw it to Darren because Richard was totally covered. He was covered. But Darren wasn't looking for the ball. So we're looking at third and 20. Here's Scott Perhoff. He's pacing down by the 40. Those guys just don't tolerate mistakes, do they? Walters over the middle. It's going to be picked off. Oh, he dropped it. Jed Wilson had a chance for a prime pickoff there as uh, Kip let her fly over the middle, and no mule was in the area. And that's fourth down and long, and the mules will punt. Well, that was another series that the Mules shot themselves in the foot and came up empty. The penalty really put them in a hole, and uh, Red Hill put on a pretty good pass rush. And uh, Yeah, but the Mules were down, what, the 18-yard line when that penalty hit? Yeah. So Darren Miller, who had a horrid punt the last time he kicked, is back to kick. He had a great one his first time. John Warren will go in motion. High snap, but handled. Nice job, Darren. And a great kick, all things considered. It'll roll and roll dead at about the 16-yard line. Darren Miller just did get that snap from Jeremy Ellis, but he did get it. And then the kick rolled dead at about the 16, and Red Hill will be in poor field position to start this possession. 3.22 to go in the third quarter. Fairfield 30, Red Hill 6. And the Salukis come out of the huddle. First and 10 at their own 16-yard line. Last series, they tried to throw the ball a few times. Oh, he moved that ball. He got away with it. Pitch out to Ambrose. This time he gets the corner as Milner was turned in, and Ambrose is hit and dropped at about the 20-yard line, about a four-yard pickup on the play. I think they're going to give... Like 21, maybe? Yeah. Okay, about a five-yard gain, second and five. And here comes Matt Lincoln in the mule defensive lineup for Jim Milner. And Jim and Scott will talk things over. <laughs> so second and five for Red Hill at their own 21-yard line. Hardacre sends Marin Holtz in motion. There's the snap. Handoff to Marin Holtz. And he is collared down at about the 25, short of the first down. Bring up third and about a yard for the Salukis. So Amos Eckleberry again on the stop. Played a good ball game, getting his first start. David Jordan enters the mule lineup. He'll replace Amos Eckleberry. Amos will go talk to Scott. Didn't say much, so good Davidson playing time. There, straight ahead goes uh, Ambrose, and he's got the first down. Only about a two-yard gain. Marty David and Seth Harden on the stop, but he only needed one. They give him out to the 33-yard line, or pardon me, 28-yard line, where it's going to be first and 10 for Red Hill. We ain't got no more than a thought. 2.14 to go in the third quarter. Fairfield 30, Red Hill 6. Here come the Salukis out of the huddle. There's the snap, and the pitch goes outside to Tully, and he's going nowhere fast. Marty David turned him in, David Jordan, and Darren Miller cleaned it up. Lost on the play, or maybe the line of scrimmage. That'll be about it. Well, it's called the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 for Red Hills at 28. Some meals are doing a bit better this half in defensing those sweeps. Of course, one thing about it, too, you got to remember, the meals probably are not nearly as tired as Red Hill by now. That's true. Red Hill doesn't have a lot of depth, plus the Mules have a super conditioning program. Hardacre rolls out, and he's spun and dropped by David Jordan back at about the 24-yard line. David Jordan shot through and made the play. So it'll be third down and 14 for Red Hill, back at their own 24. Minute 13 to go here in the third quarter. Jordan plays nose position. A little wiry guy does a good job of nose for somebody so small. He really shoots through quickly. Good 
There's the snap. Hardacre rolls out to throw. His pass is complete to Marin Holtz. He is going to get the first down, I think. Well, looked like the Mules had that one defense, but they didn't. Uh, Marin Holtz got out there to about uh, the 40 or 38 yard line. That's close to a first down. I think he's short. Well, I'll bring up fourth and short. Well, uh, Jordan almost got Hardacre on the on the pass rush, but he got the ball away, and when he did, it looked like the Mules had him surrounded, but Marin Holtz uh, turned it on and got close to the first down. They're going to measure? That's right in front of the sticks. Yeah, they're measuring it to first down. Oh, well, see, they, okay, okay. They dropped they, the sticks. They dropped the sticks when the play came over, and when they picked them up, they were downfield a little bit and uh, were not in the proper position. Less than a minute to play in the third period, and the Red Hill Salukis have a fresh set of downs at their own 39-yard line. Fooled me. Mules lead 30-6 to six as Red Hill breaks the huddle. Clock. They went out of bounds. It'll start the snap. Tully in motion. There's the snap. Hardacre on the option. Pitch is outside. Ambrose made an excellent catch on the pitch out, but Matt Link dropped him at the 40 after about a yard pickup. That's a great catch. <laughs> that was a tough, tough play. One yard gain, all that for a gain of a yard. And Red Hill faces second and nine at their own 40. 20 seconds left in the first, uh, third quarter, rather, and the clock is moving. And here come the Salukis out of the huddle. Second and nine. There's the snap. Hardacre wants to throw. Gets his pass away to Tully, who is going to be dropped by Darren Milner as the third quarter comes to a close, short of the first down. Three up, fourth down, and about seven for Red Hill. You're listening to Fairfield Mules football on WFIW. I'll tell you what, the athletic director Terry Ayers, uh, again, uh, comes through with uh, some good chow at the uh, quarter break. You know, normally, Bob, when Terry brings those sandwiches up, I have a hard time getting them in. You're going to work on that one, aren't you? This baby's Italian beef with peppers <laughs> and onions. I'm eating this one this week. We'll get a way to get it in somehow. I know that. Third down and six for Red Hill at the Red Hill 43-yard line. It is not fourth down. It is third down. And Hardacre takes the snap. Pitch out goes to Ambrose, and the Mules play that very well. Matt Hodges and... David Jordan on the stop, a loss on the play back to the 41. Or to bring up fourth down for Red Hill. Fourth down and about uh, seven or eight. John Warren is back deep for the Mules. Let's see if the Mules go for the block here, Bob, or go for the return. I kind of got a feeling they're going to go for the block. Steve Wilson, remember, came out. He was their punter. He came out uh, somewhat injured, but he is on the field. Red Hill has to take a timeout. You're listening to Mules Football on WFIW. Red Hill has uh, straightened away their problems after the timeout. They have double split receivers. You might want to look for a fake here. Wilson takes the snap. He does punt it. Nice high spiral coming downfield to John Warren. John gets away from one tackler looking for some blocks. Reverses his field. And now it's going to be hit dropped at about 25. Flag goes down on the play. I think it was his marker. Oh, was it his marker? No, that's a flag. Oh, okay. I see it now. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a face mask on Red Hill, and that'll give the Mules an extra 15. So instead of the 25, the Mules will be out the 40-yard line. So there's a break. That's a good sandwich, isn't it? Mm. That's outstanding. I don't know where you made that. Boy, that's good. Do that every week. Our apologies, fans, for eating while we're on the air, but uh, it's too good to pass up. First and ten for the Mules at the 40-yard line of the Mules, as we have 10:56 left in the fourth quarter. Mules lead 30 to six. Kip Walters hands the ball off to Darren Miller, and Darren chucking forward. Darren is going to get to the outside. And he very nearly broke that when he goes out of bounds at the Red Hill 42. That was Pertnir and all the way. Pertnir. 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 He goes from 140 to the other 40. And had one man to beat, but he collared him out of bounds. 
So the Mules will be first and 10 at about the 43 yard line of Red Hill as the Mules break the huddle, leading 30 to 6 with 10.43 to go in the game. Kip Walter sets him down, and there's the snap. Straight ahead goes Matt Link. Matt's still on his feet. He crosses the 35 to about the 34 yard line. Good gain there of about uh, seven or eight yards for the Mules. It should bring up second down and about two. At, well, they just put it down just inside the 35. So let's call it second down and about three for the Mules at the Red Hill 35 yard line. 10 20 left in the contest. Mules leading this ball game 30 to 6. The officials discussing something. I don't know what. Hadn't even blown the ball in yet. The Mules are at the line of scrimmage. Now we're all set to go. Matt Lake, first down, Mules at the 30 yard line. So that will bring up a fresh set of downs as the Mules. Have, are setting some kind of record this year about the first downs. They, you know, they're racking off 25, 30 first downs a ball game uh, anymore. It's, that's an outstanding uh, run of first downs again. Well, you know, we've talked about in some other ball games where the Mules control the ball game, but necessarily, <clears throat> excuse me, don't necessarily put up all the points that they we think they should. Mules go straight ahead this time, and not much running room there for. Uh, Matt Lane, oh, pardon me, Danny Hesterley on the carry. What oh, was that, Matt? No, that was Matt. Down in the 30s. About a yard, just inside the 30. Second and nine for the Mules, 9.20 left in the contest. Mules have totally dominated this second half, but have no points to show for it. There's the snap. Walters pitches out to Darren Milner. He cuts to the outside. He's got the first down and more. He's down to the Red Hill. 17-yard line where it'll be first and 10 for the Fairfield Mules. We've been down here a couple of times this first half, come up uh, with a penalty or something to uh, have it go awry. Well, again, the Mules with good blocking up front, Stanley, if we allow Darren to get out there and turn that up and get good yardage out of Darren's going to take a little break on the sideline. Marty David comes in. We've got Danny Hesterly in the backfield. And Matt Link is the other back in the bone. Handoff goes to Danny Hesterley, and he plows forward for good yardage across the 15 to about the 13-yard line. About a four-yard gain for the sophomore running back. Well, they put it down at the uh, 14, where it'll be second down and uh, seven for the Mules. Brooke Clayton carries the play in as Matt Link comes to the sideline. He's going to get a little rest. So Brooke Clayton goes to the fullback position. Marty David at the right halfback. And Kip Walters takes the snap, hands it off to Danny Hesterley, and uh, Danny didn't read his block at all. He gets no yardage. As a matter of fact, he lost yardage back to about the 15-yard line. Uh, again, Bob, there was a case that Danny would have uh, veered to the outside. He had a lot of room to maneuver. But third as eight. it is, the Mules are at third and eight. Third and eight, and we're four down territory, so we don't have to get it all in one pop. Third and eight at the 15. Walters takes the snap. Matt Link straight ahead. Matt's still flying forward. He's down close to about the 11-yard line, which is going to be a fourth down and about five for the Mules. At the Red Hill 11 or 12. Darren Milner carries the play in. Danny Hesterly to the side. Seven and a half minutes left in the game. Here come the Mules out of the huddle in a pro set. I think if we get one more touchdown, Stanley, we'd see a lot of subs. Darren Milner gets the first down, and he is out of bounds. There's a flag down. Well, it may not be a first down. There's a flag down. He was in the end zone. They're signaling touchdown. Oh, was he in the end zone? I thought they marked him just, just shy of the end zone. And it's a penalty on the Mules. So instead of first and goal at the, well, they got it marked at the one there, Bob. Instead okay. of first and goal at the one, the flag's laying at about the two, and it's coming back from there, and it's still fourth down. So that'll change what Bob Hadfield wants to do. 7-15 left in the game. Mules up 30-6, to six, and this has been a score of the second half. The Mules have dominated the second half, but every time they get close down in the red zone, they've come up empty. Uh, they've either gotten a penalty just like they did here, was it holding? Clip. 
clip or something of that nature to uh, negate a scoring opportunity. So we're looking at uh, fourth and ten from about the 17-yard line. So let's see if Kip wants to put it up. Well, there's nobody covering Baker. Oh, that, now they get out there. There's the snap. Walters rolls out. Looks to Baker. He's got it. And he'll be down at about the one. He's just shy of the goal line. And Baker and McAdow have a little set, too. And that's where the heads prevail as Kurt, Kurt Roberts comes in. Don't do that, Jason. Was there a dance tonight? I think it must have been inviting him to a dance. He uh, was talking to him, got up, talked to him. I think he was trying to show him how well his shoulder pads are built. Is oh, is that what it was? No. Okay. First and goal for the Mules at about the two. 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 Yeah, about two. Two, two yard line. Good call. Here come the Mules out of the huddle, and now there's a whistle and a Red Hill timeout. And let's take a 30 second break. This is Fairfield Mules football. First down at about the two yard line, Red Hill did not have the defense in there that they wanted, so they called a timeout to get some different personnel on the field. And the Mules leading with 6.45 to go in the ball game. Mules up 30 to six, and looking to punch in another score right here. My, that's as, a good sandwich. <laughs> and as I uh, mentioned a while ago, Stanley, I think uh, a 24 point lead is, is, is uh, comfortable, but I think uh, Coach Hadfield would feel better. He hasn't been pleased with the way the Mules have performed. They've marched it up and down the field, but can't punch it in and making mistakes. But I think if we punch this in, we would see a lot of subs. Handoff goes to Matt Link. Touchdown, Touchdown Mules. Matt Link from two yards out with 6.41 to go in the ball game, making it 36-6 to and the extra point attempt upcoming. As the Mules get their fifth touchdown of the night. You know, the Mules are averaging just right at 39 points a ball game, Bob, and that's, that's quite an average. Oh, considering well. the people we play. John Warren sets them down. And the Mules shift to the eye. There's the snap. Johnny rolls to the short side. Did he make it? Yes. He is in. Mules 38, Red Hill 6. You're listening to Mules Football on WFIW. Listen at the 17-yard line, trying to get to the outside. Uh, whoops. Uh, he'll not get anywhere. He's collared down at the 30, probably the 29-yard line. Jed made the fatal mistake, Bob. He saw two Mules coming, just kind of stopped. That's, that's when you usually get whacked. Well, he's coming up limping, and you know, really that's when you get hurt when you don't go full speed. It's hard to explain that to people who've never played the game, but when you let up in this game, you, that's when you, the injuries occur. It's not when you go full speed and smack somebody with all your force. It's when you let up is when the injuries occur. As we suspected, new people in the Emil lineup, J.R. Hodges at, at the end, Seth, or Josh Harnden. Well, Marty, you better hurry up. And uh, he made it. There's the snap. They go straight ahead with Ambrose, and he's brought down by Billy Hefner. At about the 35-yard uh, line, so about a five-yard pickup there, almost six. I said, Josh, where did I get that? Jason. Jason Harnden. Jason Harnden is at the uh, defensive tackle spot. J.R. Hodges is in there. David Jordan. Billy Hefner. Brett McGuire. New faces out there for the Mules. Ambrose goes in motion, and they're going to pop it out to him. And it's incomplete. They had Ambrose and Wilson out there. Both recovered well. Hesterly had uh, Ambrose and uh, Hefner had Wilson. And uh, that's downright good coverage. They were right there with them. Bringing up a third down and about uh, five for Red Hill. At their own 35 with 5.41 to go in the ball game. Mules lead 38-6. Here come the Salukis out of the huddle. To the line of scrimmage. Hardacre looks over the mule defense, takes the snap, draw play. Ambrose was hit in the backfield, got away from that, but now he'll be brought down short of the first down. Bring up fourth and about three for Red Hill. They likely will go for it here, considering the time of the ball game and the distance to go. It's about fourth and two. Well, I don't know. Steve Wilson comes in. We'll see what they're going to do. He is the punter. 520 left in the game. it will be a good, good chance, a uh, good spot for the... Uh, Salukis to go on a long count. They're uh, just flat going for it. They're just going to go for it. Going a long count. 
Yeah, going along now, try to draw the meals. Got a lot of young, eager players in there right now. Aaron Holtz in motion. There's the snap. Ambrose has the first down. So Red Hill gets a fresh set as the uh, ball comes out to the 41-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 for Red Hill. Jason Baker is going to get some time at safety for the Mules as Richard Reed will take probably the rest of the night off. So John Warren is in there at safety, and he's coming out right now as Brandon Doty comes in. I think all the starters are out of there now. Aren't they? Brandon, a 5'8", 140-pound sophomore. Hardacre wants to throw the ball. Downfield it goes. He's got a man. It's Wilson, and he's going to score. That is a 59-yard touchdown pass from Todd Hardacre to Jed Wilson. And Red Hill uh, gets on the board with 4.31 to go in the ball game. And it's now 38 to 12. And they all have an extra point attempt upcoming. Wholesale changes by the Mules now on the extra point. And they put their goal line people in. Red Hill will go for the deuce. Jed Wilson caught the ball down the sideline and went in for a 59-yard touchdown play. And Hardacre sets him down for the two-point conversion. There's the snap. He wants to throw. He's under heat now and gets it away. And Merritt Holtz gets it in the end zone. So, it is Red Hill uh, getting the conversion. Mules 38, Red Hill 14. You're listening to Mules Football on WFIW. New dummy can. 37-yard line where the Mules will have it first and 10. And likely, Bob, we'll see. New people on offense as well for the Fairfield Mules here with 427 left in the game. We do see a horde of new people coming out for the Mules. We'll pick them up as we can. Mules, matter of fact, that you know, they need to hurry up and huddle up. They've got people all over coming in and out. The ball's been blown into play. And they're still coming in. So they may or may not get this play off. Folks, we'll try to catch up with uh, who's in and who's not. John Warren in a quarterback. We can see that for sure. He sets him down and gets the ball off. There's the snap. Brett McGuire with good yardage. He crosses the 40 to about the 43. So about seven yards on that carry for Brett. Maybe six, depending on where they put it. Let's call it a six-yard game. Second down and four for the Mules at their own 43. 346 to go in the contest. Zach Hooper in for the Mules, as is Amos Eckleberry, uh, Bobby Wells, Brett McGuire, J.R. Hodges, Billy Hefner, and the Mules go straight ahead and get about uh, two, bring up third down, McGuire again carrying. Red Hill sending some other people in too. Jed Wilson, who just caught that touchdown pass, comes out. Now we have a whistle, and uh, Red Hill calls a timeout. Well, with 3.15 to go in the ball game, the Mules lead 38-14. to 14. We'll take a 30-second break. You're listening to Mules Football. I want to remind our listeners to stay tuned after the ball game for the Napa Auto Parts postgame show. Coach Bob Hatfield will come up and talk to us about tonight's ball game. And uh, next week's opponent, the Flora Wolves in Flora. And, uh, of course, tomorrow morning at 9.05, it's the IHSA Sports Report on AM 1390. Then at uh, 9.25 this week in college football. And uh, 10.05 coaches comments with Bob Hatfield. But Bob will be up tonight on the uh, Napa Auto Parts postgame show. Tony Arocco in the ball game, at wide receiver now for the Mules. Rennie Kate then on the line. Uh, who's playing center? JR. Okay. Straight ahead goes Brett McGuire on third and short. And he'll be close to the first down. I don't believe he has it, though. Yes, well, they say he does have it. Okay. We'll take it. And the Mules get uh, another first down. They'll move the sticks and roll the clock. 2.53 and rolling as the Mules have a first and 10 on their own 47-yard line. Leading 38 to 14. There's the snap, and John Warren on the keeper gets across midfield into Red Hill territory at about 48, about a five-yard carry for John. Two and a half minutes left in the contest, and it'll be real simple here for the Mules. They'll just run the football the rest of the way and 
take victory number five on the campaign. Go to five and oh. Four and oh in the uh, league. Four and oh perfecto. <laughs> We remember one year when they went 4-0, oh, ended up 4-5, and five. not the meals we're talking about. Straight ahead, Billy Hefner, not much there for Wahoo, about a yard maybe, down to the 47. Third down and three for the meals now at the Red Hill 47-yard line. A minute 55 left in the game. No. No, the meals are going to set it down and run it out. May not even putt. They may just go ahead and run on fourth down as well. Minute 40 to go in the game and clock rolling. Uh, Matt McGuire has the first down. And he's all the way down to the Red Hill 35. Good hard running by the senior fullback, Brett McGuire. Meals will get a fresh set of downs at the Red Hill 35 with a minute 32 to go in the contest. Bill Evans putting a lot of new people in too. Bill just left upstairs here and went down to the sideline. J.D. Hill carries the play in for the Mules. The uh, Salukis, Bob, are, are a respectable team. They're going to be competitive with the rest of their schedule. Well, you know, they've uh, they've got us and Mount Carmel and Salem out of the way. Uh, that helps. Straight ahead goes Billy Hefner, and he's to about the 30, about a five-yard carry. So, uh, you know, is their hope? This is going to give them their third loss, which will make them two and three. But uh, as we mentioned, they've already played us in Mount Carmel and Salem. So, but they are on the bubble now, though. They oh, can't lose anymore. They can't lose anymore. They're looking at uh, Flora, Lawrenceville, um, Alney. Alney down the road. So, Snap is made, and the handoff goes to Brett McGuire, and he'll be short of the first down. He'll bring up third to about two. And I so think Neil's get down to the 28. I'm sorry. I, I think Oblongs are the non-conference foe at the end. He yeah, had eighth game of the year. I believe they play Oblong. Yeah. So, anyway, the Mule's looking at third and short. Half a minute to go in the game. The clock is moving. John Warren didn't wait for J.D. Hill. He just called the play. J.D. comes out and sets up with a wide receiver. There's the snap. Straight ahead goes David Jordan. He's got the first down, and he'll be down to the 21-yard line. Stops the clock with 12 seconds. The Mules may not snap the ball again. I doubt they'll even come out of the huddle. And they will start the clock when the sticks are set, and we're and, at 10 seconds. And they will not come out of the huddle. The Mules go to 5-0 and oh on the campaign, 4-0 and oh in the NEC. And there is the final gun. The Fairfield Mules win it here tonight over the Red Hill Salukis, 38 to 14. As Bob said, going to 5 and 0 on the season, 4 and 0 in the NEC. Red Hill goes to 2 and 3 overall, and uh, in NEC play, they are now 1 and 3. And uh, the Mules will now face the Flora Wolves next week in Flora to try to keep the winning streak going. And the Red Hill Salukis uh, go out of here We're losing by 24 points on the night. So the Mules have uh, kept the winning streak going, 5-0 and on the campaign now. And win it here tonight, 38-14 to over the Red Hill Salukis. That's Fields Football. Stay tuned for the Napa Auto Parts postgame show coming up next. <laughs> 